We want to go back to one of our top stories this afternoon and the Kenya Law Reform Commission is demanding an explanation from the Attorney General over plans to amend the law to give the President powers to appoint the Chief Justice. Meanwhile, that commission says it will step in to undertake the mandate previously spearheaded by the Commission on the Implementation of the Constitution whose tenure expired last month. While addressing the press uh, this morning, the commissioners allayed fears that the exit of a CIC had actually created a vacuum and we want now to speak to Mbage Nganga who is the chair of the Kenya Law Reforms Commission on this uh, on an array of issues that I've just mentioned thank you very much sir for joining us this afternoon let's now begin let's begin with an update you know from the courts and the high court has actually declined to suspend uh, implementation of the law that gives uh, pres the president uh, powers to select the chief justice what do you have to say about this new development uh, I say it is the prerogative of the High Court to determine any issues of the constitutionality or otherwise of the amendment to the JSC Act. Right, and what would be your next move uh, given that this has now taken place? I, I don't think it is a very serious issue to really be concerned about because the amendment does not seek to remove the power of the JSC to recommend the appointment of the Chief Justice. It is just a process. The, the, the Judicial Service Commission can on its own decide whether to submit one candidate or three candidates to the, Attorney Gen to the President. But the amendment seeks to regulate that procedure, provide that the JSC will provide uh, three candidates. Now, this was done under the Statute Law Amendments Act. Um, whether the process was, 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 was legal or not is still a matter to be determined by the High Court. Even if the JS, the, the court has refused to set aside that amendment. I believe that the matter is still subject, subjudicate. I, I do not have the current position whether the court is saying that the matter will go for full hearing or not. If it is going to, to be for full hearing, which I suspect is the position, the matter is still subjudicate, and we cannot comment very much about it. Let's talk about the intended uh, changes. Do you think that it is a systematic attempt of uh, uh, undermining or weakening independent institutions in the country? Well, I really don't see that going towards that because the power of the JSC is still there. The only thing that uh, Parliament did was to attempt to regulate the procedure of how JSC can exercise that power. What I recollect is that the, 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 what led to all this is a proposed amendment uh, which was put under the Statute Law Amendment Act to provide that the JSC must submit the, the recommendation to the president in three days. So they wanted the procedure to be codified. Parliament went further and decided to further propose amendments to the AGs bill and provided for the, for the, for the three candidates. Uh, if we look at other jurisdictions, like the United States, where the president has the power to nominate candidates for the Supreme Court, including the Chief Justice, he submits a candidate to Congress. If that candidate is rejected, the president always has some reserve candidates, which he can then push forward for consideration. The only difference between our system is this, is here, is that it is the JSC in Kenya which 
He interviews the candidates and recommends them for appointment to the president. What the president is saying is that uh, he would want to have a leeway of uh, vetting the three candidates and decide which name to present to parliament. Now, I do not know how this amendment ended up in, in parliament because it was not subjected to public participation. As a law reform commission, we were not aware of that amendment. And, um, and, and I think these are the issues that are being raised by, by the, the civil society, like the, the, the law society. And uh, I think this is an issue that the, 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 the High Court will look into. And as I said in my other statement, we really cannot comment on this uh, with a lot of authority. It is the Chief, it is the Judicial Service Commission and the Attorney General who need to explain to Kenyans uh, whether what Parliament uh, enacted is what they intended. Thank you. Right. Let, uh, just before I let you go, I want us to talk about another issue, and that is in regard to uh, the CIC, whose term expired uh, uh, just a few, like two weeks ago. You say that there is a vacuum. What do you think needs to be done, considering the uh, the issues that was put, the laws that were supposed to be handled this year in August? There is actually no vacuum in the constitutional implementation process created by the expiry of the term of CIC. The mandate of CIC in constitutional implementation is contained in the sixth schedule to the constitution. The same schedule gives the mandate to the office of the Attorney General and the Kenya Law Reform Commission as the primary institutions who are mandated to prepare the laws for tabling in parliament. The role of the CIC is monitoring and facilitation. So during the last five years, the Office of the Attorney General and the Kenya Law Reform Commission has worked together with the CIC uh, in developing legislation for constitutional implementation. Right. The, CIC, the, the Kenya Law Reform Commission is the principal agency that is the interface between the policy making arm of the government, which is the executive, and particularly the ministries, the departments, and agencies. We prepare the draft bills. These are then discussed at the round table which is chaired by the CIC, mm. which is also attended by the, the, the Commission, the Office of the Attorney General, and the relevant uh, government ministry. Okay. So the CIC does have the sole responsibility of constitutional implementation. Right. If, when its time has expired, the other institutions will proceed with implementation. Right. Thank you very much, Mbage Nganga there, who is the chair of the Kenya Law Reform Commission, talking to us, of course, about uh, the issue to do with uh, the so-called constitutional mutilation of